Hello, my name is Leboha Madise. I look after developer audiences across Africa. With me today is Votlari Ricordo, also known as VT. He is a software engineer turned CTO, turned podcast lead. <laughs> Welcome, Ricordo. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. And yeah, let's talk about your journey from early in career when you're in university to where you are now. I studied BIS Multimedia uh, at the University of Pretoria in undergrad and then did my um, honours in computer science. But my programming journey started in high school with Delphi 7. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and today we've got C Sharp 10, .NET 6. Like, how did you go from Delphi to where you are today? I think it's, uh, you know, so I've always been a polyglot, right? Um, I've always tried to be language agnostic, even though C Sharp has always had a special place in my heart, mm -hmm. right? So, I, you know, I started Delphi, Java, mm -hmm. uh, C++. Nice. And then because I've played around in different fields, like, you know, mainly front end, doing back end, full stack work, yeah. as well as mobile, it's kind of exposed me to the different languages. Cool. And as a CTO, I mean, like, what inspired you to go from just being a software engineer to taking on a more leadership role? I think just um, a general love for helping people, right? Helping people progress. Uh, I've always said that software development saved my life, right? Wow. Um, and I think the opportunity to, you know, to transition and to thrive in my career because of the leaders that I've always had has always m made me feel like I have to pay it forward. Yeah. Talking about pay, paying it forward, um, in your organization, you use GitHub, right? Yeah. So pretend I'm an early in career intern and I'm just joining your company straight from university. I'm like being trusted with this code base. <laughs> um, what, what safety measures do you put in place to create a, an environment where everyone can contribute? So I think, um, you know, like you said, our, our code is in GitHub, so uh, First of all, it's easy to get started because all we want is your GitHub username, right? So you're not creating a new account or anything. You're in the environment where you're already used to. You know, you're exposed to that in, in university. Secondly, we have, like, our environment is fully automated. So from the, from the moment you check in your code, it gets peer reviewed. Um, once it gets merged, it gets automatically um, you know, deployed into the dev environment that is accepted, you're happy, that gets pushed to production, right? Mm -hmm. So this serves anyone, whether you're a junior starting out on your first day or a senior who's been in, that, in, in the space for 20 years, right? Yeah. It's, it's like a level playing field for everyone. Yeah. So I see you wearing one of the <laughs> open sourcer t-shirts. Do you contribute to any open source work? I do. Um, I, I do, but not as much as I'd like to in terms of code because my focus is more on the community, like the people side of things, like I said. Uh, I think we have a lot of leaders when it comes to how the technology works, but not as much when it comes to um, being guided through the journey as you know, someone starting out, right? Uh, yeah. How do you engage with other people? Uh, in, uh, in encouraging people to be part of a, of a community beyond just checking in code, yeah. right? Like being part of something bigger than yourself, engaging with other people on a regular basis. Yeah. Talking about communities, I mean, at Microsoft, we support a lot of um, open source as well as um, Microsoft stack uh, communities. Yeah. But your community, Zere Tech, is quite different from the traditional meetup groups. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why you started that initiative? So Zere Tech Radio started by accident, right? Yeah. Um, it was like just bang in the, uh, in, in the middle of, of lockdown. Um, people were all like fatigued and we had Twitter spaces, which was a new medium. We tried it out and it became almost like a one-on-one, a, a -on -one, right? Uh, and that's how it started. So uh, me and Cicely, one of the co-hosts, used to have one-on-ones where we just chat about things that he's struggling with and we wanted to extend that to the greater tech community for people you know, who don't know how to negotiate for a salary, yeah. right? For people who don't know what they, what they should be putting on their CV or on, on, their, on their resume. Yeah. So that's why that community exists, to help people get started. Yeah. So I'm actually one of the members on your Discord channel. <laughs> and I saw that you have something called Pimp My GitHub. What's that about? Yeah, so Pimp My GitHub is a very interesting thing, right? So... Um, as a, as a developer, we, as developers or people in technology, we're in a unique position because um, we can be a bit more creative in our way in, in trying to get in, right? Um, and 
online presence is a big thing. So today, instead of having to do a take-home uh, assessment or having to send your, um, your, your CV, you can send someone a GitHub link, right? And when you set, send someone um, a link to your GitHub, that basically like gives them all the information they need to know about how you work, right? How you're writing your commit messages, how you structure your projects, how you, you know, how much information you put in terms of documentation. So Pimp My GitHub is an attempt to help people just polish that. All the way from the readme to how you're committing your code to all the other information and links that you should be adding there to make you stand out to a recruiter. Your brand affinity with GitHub is really major, not only in your professional life as a CTO, yeah. but also as a community lead. Um, can you tell us uh, any of the, the, the features of GitHub that you like the most? Uh, so my favorite thing right now is GitHub Code Spaces. Right, yeah. you you don't always uh, have the you know the luxury of carrying around like a big computer with all the computing power to do your work. Yeah. Um, so being able to access GitHub Code Spaces from any device, yeah. and still being able to do your work and like working with the exact same workflow that you have, like that's brilliant, yeah. right? And uh, I think right now one of my favorite things is GitHub Copilot, right? Yeah. So I'm a big fan of um, of pair programming. And now GitHub Copilot feels like pair programming with someone who's way smarter than me. You know how they always say software developers are like some, somewhere in a room alone? And <laughs> now it means you're no longer coding alone, you've got a friend. Exactly, I've got, I've got a friend who knows how to name things better than me. I've got a friend who is interested in actually learning my coding style and yeah. you know, like help, helping me code faster without having to deviate from the way I write code. Yeah. So for people who are early in career, might interpret that as, as cheating. But then don't you think that uh, having co-pilot enables you as a software engineer or CTO to then focus on the crux of the problem that you're trying yeah. to solve and not so much on the semantics and the syntax? You know? So can you tell us a little bit more about the power <laughs> of co-pilot? There's, there's a lot of vanity in being a developer, right? Yeah. We have a syndrome of, like, it's not built here. You know, we want to build everything from scratch. But I think, I think when you're learning, that's great. Um, but when you're part of a business, the idea is to use technology to solve problems, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and in that space, there isn't really that much uh, room for vanity. It's about uh, getting to the answer. Yeah. And GitHub, GitHub Copilot helps you get there much faster, right? It, it also just... It's like a reminder of some of the things. I mean, we already use IntelliS IntelliSense within our IDEs, yeah. and GitHub Copilot kind of just takes that to a whole different level. Cool. Um, so yeah, thank you. Anything else that you would like to share? Uh, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for um, the contributions that Microsoft and GitHub make to community. I think community is, is, is very important, and I think community accelerates growth. So as long as companies like Microsoft are contributing to that and they're helping people get started, help, help, helping people thrive in technology, I'll always be supportive of that. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sure.